Hello, and today we're going to do something slightly different. We're actually going to look at the June board game, which was originally published in 1979. And um, this game was actually apparently based on a Roman Empire game called Tribute, which I'm not sure if that ever got published, but um, Avalon Hill converted it to June, apparently pinching some ideas from Cosmic Encounter. Um, anyway, we ended up with what's widely regarded as one of the best game interpretations of the Dune novel which was published in 1965. Now with the release of the film in 1984 it got a second edition and then with the excitement around the TV series that came out around 2000 a lot of people were getting excited about rumours of a reprint of Dune. Sadly they'd be a little bit disappointed when in 2012 it was released as Rex Final Days of an Empire. And it was around this time that I started getting interested in getting my own copy of this classic. Now there are elements of the game that work really well, other bits that don't, and I think um, unfortunately that's where Rex fell down, that some of the bits that didn't work quite so well in the original uh, got thrown into sharp relief by the, the re-theme into Twilight Imperium. Plus they changed the route of the storm, which we'll come on to, uh, with um, basically randomly moving um, battleships that were bombing the surface, and it, it just didn't quite work. So the mechanics and the theme merge really well in the original. Now if you're interested in gaming in the Dune universe, you might also want to consider Dune and Dune 2, which came out in 1992. Uh, Dune 2 is a Westwood kind of tactical real-time strategy game. Uh, Dune, though, in my opinion, is a much better game, and I really liked it on the Amiga. I thought it had a slightly better soundtrack, although I think if you can get a Roland um, sound card, then the, the Dune on PC with the, the voiceover via CD can sound amazing. Also, uh, it generated the Spice Opera soundtrack, which I still enjoy even to this day. Uh, really, really good. Anyway, there you go. So that is the background to where we end up with my version of Dune, which is this copy here, which is a print and play edition. So let's get into the box, but before we do that, I did actually um, modify the artwork slightly and also create a sort of back panel, which I believe I did use the, the print and play version and I, I tweaked it, if I remember correctly. So I can't remember how much of this is the original creator's vision versus me tweaking, for example, I'm pretty sure. I uh, added this text to this picture and I can't remember if this is the original colour it came with or if I colourised it. So apologies to, uh, I believe it's Ilya, uh, who came up with this magnificent uh, print and play edition. And if you're interested in print and play there is also a version on Board Game Geek which is very very good and I believe that's uh, known as Scott's Dune Build Project. So you might want to go check that out for a slightly different set of graphics. So anyway, to the back of the box and then inside. Well, as you can see on the back of the box, I've uh, inserted some of the graphics for the leaders, the blurb from possibly the Board Game Geek game description, uh, the map, the combat wheels, sort of the rule book I'm using, and then the actual original logo and cover for the Frank Herbert's Dune game and um, I think it gives my print and play a sort of much more finished product look. Now sadly this box is a little bit thin, it could do with being more like this thickness so I have looked into um, maybe doing like a little cardboard insert to kind of hold the lid a bit kind of like a scythe deluxe edition. Anyway enough of that I'm sure you want to see what's inside so let's get in the box. Now inside the box first thing you're going to get is this lovely piece of artwork on a bag so a nice little drawstring bag it's quite a nice feel to it um, little pull ribbon so you can store tokens cards whatever you want inside here I then got a load of wooden discs now these might get replaced by blue crystals these are your spice tokens so as I say, tempted to replace those by uh, blue crystals. You've then got your faction tokens. So you've got yellow, green, blue, red, orange, black, then a load of marker tokens, including um, your storm. So again, this might get replaced by 
a 3D printout. And then I forget whether these are spares or were for marking stuff on um, various factions special powers cards. Um, we've then got a load of ArtsCal uh, decks because the print and play did actually have the option for that. So for example, we've got the Harkonnen, the black, so we've got leader cards and then alliance cards. And these are really, really nice quality. Um, you've got the silhouette of the troops, so uh, Fremen. Let me find the Fremen. Where have they gone? No, that's not the Fremen. This is the Fremen, isn't it? Yeah, so you've got the yellow Fremen same icon and again I believe there are 3D printable versions of these guys so if you don't want to like I did have to cut out stickers and glue them on which is a real pain um, yeah you might want to 3D print if you can do that so you've got the Fremen, the Emperor, the Harkonnen, the Guild, the Atreides, the Bene Gesserit and then your leaders rated from 1 to 10 I want to say now, one thing that I think you could do um, with is, I can't remember if you can do it in the original game, but to have one of these guys be a zero, where you're actually saying, I'm playing a leader, and then when you flip it, there's actually no leader there. So I am tempted to look into the, getting um, that printed off, um, so as part of your bluff. So we've got the Harkonnen there. In this box, we have the guild. And again, the same alliance cards. So um, again, I think one of these these two guys maybe got misprinted. So as part of the deck building, you, you actually got extra copies of these guys, so you could actually um, change them up a bit. Then in this box here, we have the Fremen. So again, you know, Stilgar, Jamis, Liet. Shani, uh, shout out Mapes and Othium, I think he's called. Hopefully, sorry, hopefully you can see those. Uh, holding the cards a little bit low there. Then, um, this, I think, is this the Atreides in here? Yeah, so we've got the Atreides, and the Atreides have a Quizax Hadarak leader bonus card. So, um, you need obviously a little token for that. And then, obviously, Gurney. Paul, Dr. Yui, Fufa, Jessica, and Duncan. Sadly, no uh, Baron, because of course, uh, spoiler alert, things don't go well for him in the story. Um, yeah, if you like the story, um, the TV mini series probably is closer to the book, but I think the film had a style that was a, a bit better, really. Uh, so there you go. So this is the Emperor. So Hasmir, Fenring, Kaid. Arasham, Berseg, the Emperor, and Basher. I'm surprised in some ways we don't have Princess, uh, what's it, Erline, is it? I think's her name. Um, she uh, would have been quite good as a leader. So this is the Bene Gesserit who have a prediction card. So they get to predict who's going to win and when exactly um, correct you actually win. So so we've got Alia, Mother Moheim, Romalio, Lady Fenring. Oh, that's why, yes, yeah, she's Bene Gesserit and she Princess Erlian and Wana Marcus. So yes, I forgot she was a Bene Gesserit. Uh, so yeah, as I say, with the stories, obviously it's all set around spice and genetic breeding and politics and uh, religious fanaticism. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Now we've got the traitors. So a whole load of those. So there should be one for each card and each person will get, uh, I can't remember if it's, they get four of these and they pick one to be their traitor. Uh, so if you ever use, for example, guild rep, here, if you actually use him in a fight against me and I have him as my traitor, then oh, is it not focusing? Yeah, if you have him as your traitor, I go actually, um, no. So uh, he doesn't fight for you, he's a traitor working for me. So there you go. So you can see quite a lot of cards. Then in here we have a load of treachery cards. Quite a lot, not going to show you all of these, but 
We've got a poison weapon, a stunner, a thumper, ya ya yam, worthless, a bazalette, etc. A whole load of really cool artwork, harvester, la la la, residual poison, trip to gamut, cone of silence. Yeah, so lots of really, really cool stuff. And the artwork, has, as, I, as I mentioned, just just stunning really really good job really like the clean graphic design of this sort of art deco inspired uh, set of cards now watch this ah oh, this is the storm movement and the spice blows so spice blow will be in this location on the map at 10 this location on the map at 6 and then there's Shai Halud. Then, of course, we got the storm movement. So, really, really nicely done. And of course, you can sleeve all this to keep your cards protected, but it's going to take a lot more space. Pretty much doubles the amount of space the cards take up when you sleeve them, I find. Then, finally, this box, which I think mostly contains stuff I'm not necessarily going to be using. So, I've got some large disc so I think that's the storm movement and that's the actual storm now I believe the idea is you could actually glue that onto the back um, I can't remember now it's been a while since I printed out this edition so I'm probably not going to use those and with the cards you got another storm thing to cut out you got tiny versions of the combat wheels um, which are, I'm not so sure are going to be useful we got the, uh, if I remember correctly, the extra cards slash misprints. Then we have Betrayal and Bonus cards. Now I believe the Betrayal and Bonus are sort of uh, an expansion if I remember correctly. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use those in my games, but there you go. So that's all the cards. I haven't shown you every single one because as you can see there are absolutely tons of them. So let's get into the box a bit deeper and show you some of the extra bits that I've got kicking around inside here. Well, one of the first things uh, you're going to need to build yourself is a combat screen. Uh, so I'm still in the process of finishing these off. I was thinking of attaching them to maybe some uh, I don't know, a foam core maybe, and on the back you're normally meant to have the instructions about your faction, and these just look great. So we've got the Benny Tillac, so the Benny Gesserit, the Atreides, the Guild, the Harkonnen, the Emperor, and of course the Fremen who live on Arrakis, which is represented by the map board. Now because I was printing this out on four sheets of paper and then gluing it to a map board, I had to print each bit out, so it hasn't quite 100% lined up, but also it meant I had a whole load of space at the bottom here, so I've actually, in my version, I've actually expanded the tanks and the spice bank down at the bottom so it all fits in nicely if I remember correctly this is your turn order thing up in the top you've got your little circles for your factions and then the storm starts here and works your way around so if I can quickly reach the storm disc here what you can do is where's he gone so yeah so we can put the sort of turn tracker over on the top corner there, put the storm marker here and slowly move it around. Now again, might want to be tempted to 3D print this. Um, it's the same size disc as the other bits and pieces. So there you go, so that's quite nice. And then obviously, uh, if I just grab one of these discs here, you know, it can sit there to say, you know, that player is that faction, etc. Right, now, the board itself has some really wonderful artwork on it. I uh, really like the look and feel of it. And you've got like your protected areas with this sort of thick red border. Uh, then these are the raised areas, if I remember correctly. Obviously, you've got the polar sink and then the desert spaces, which obviously the storm can impact. Now, if you don't like using cards and you prefer poker chips, um, the print and play also does come with some stickers for those so I need to find some poker chips that these would maybe go on and I am tempted to make up the poker chips just for that tactile feel although I do I do quite like the feel of cards in my hand but um, you know if you if you want the print and play does have the option for those 
Then of course you've got the combat wheels and this is something else I need to finish off. Uh, I was thinking of maybe doing a 3D print so this bit would sit inside a nice 3D printed circle and then this bit would click on top and allow you to rotate it. So if you're putting 12 guys into a fight you'd set it to 12. If you're only putting let's say five guys into a fight you'd put it like that. But for now I could always cheat and just get a little like um, not yeah, paper clip just to hold it in place and but yeah, um that's something I haven't quite finished on my print and play. Um and then of course the rules, which uh again I was thinking of binding and all that, but I've just less left it loose. So front cover and then of course you've got the actual rules and these are sort of a print and play re edit to make it match up with the graphics from the print and play, but also to incorporate various rules and um, variants that you might want to play with. So if we skip all the way to the back you've got the game almanac which will tell you all about uh, faction powers so each house gets a pretty generous description. Then um, some Karama effects, alliance cards, what the sets do, treachery cards, quite a lot of info on all those, then other cards. So what does the Quizzic Hadrat card do? What's the Orthopter bonus card do? The Harvester bonus card and then index of all the actual cards and then credits etc. So really really good job of taking the classic game and updating it. Now with rumours of a new June film on the way uh, it would be great for the game licence to be restored so June could get its proper um, theme and game tied back together and with a sort of graphic design like this bringing it up to speed with modern standards I think it would be great. So as you can see the print and play allows you to get a version of the game that looks much better than the original because to be quite frank the originals not aged so well. So there you go that is a look at the print and play copy of June that you can create for yourself. Uh, it's going to take you quite a bit of time. Uh, you would help if you've got a little bit of photoshopping skills and a little bit of crafting skills to assemble it. And as you can see I haven't got it quite perfect but I'm reasonably happy and at some stage I might reprint these and look into like peeling this off and re-gluing these boards and trying to get them flat without any air pockets in was quite a challenge. I did a pretty good job on the board. I uh, did have a little bit of a problem with the back cover of my box but um, it's pretty happy and if you're interested in what's on the other side well it's just plain white so I could always just glue my fresh bits of um, map on here and even print out a different variant if I wanted a different look to my map board. So as you can see wonderful job um, just give you a little bit of a close-up, so a nice bit of texture in, lovely font, even tells you where various splice blows are going to be, and then of course this is a rakeen with a little orthopter symbol which is obviously important, and then you know some nice little icons across the bottom there. So there you go, that is that. I hope you've enjoyed that look of June. Uh, I might do a part two for how the game actually works, um, but obviously I want to make sure I've got uh, various bits assembled um, so I can show it to you but maybe I'll just go ahead with what I've got so far.